is Sandy Wiley. Welcome to my mental health channel. I'm glad you turned on and tuned in and I hope you subscribe or you're already a subscriber and if you like this video give it a, a thumbs up. Today what we're going to talk about is something that every single one of us has. Feelings. Let's talk about feelings. Do you control your feelings or does your feelings control you? When I think about feelings, I think about my God. This is like so, like so many feelings from, you know, feeling angry, the feeling sad, the feeling happy, the feeling shameful, um, the feeling lonely, the feeling insecure, feeling in love. I could go on and on, and so could you. We can make we can make lists and lists and lists and lists lists uh, lists of them. Now, what about controlling them? I'll tell you what I think. I think that we cannot control our feelings. All right. A lot of people think that they do control their feelings, but what they're really doing is stuffing them down, repressing their feelings. And that's their way of controlling their feelings. Now, I'm going to just be, before I even go further, I want you all to know, I don't have a degree in psychology. I'm not a psychology major. This is my channel. This is only my opinion. Doesn't mean it's the right opinion. It doesn't mean you have to agree with it. Just be nice in the comments. If you disagree, you don't have to call me disturbed or you don't have to call me names or call each other names. You can just say, I disagree with that. I think that you can control your feelings. Whatever you say, is fine as long as you don't insult me or anyone else. You can state your belief. You can say, I disagree with you, whatever. Free country. I'm not coming on here as a professional or trying to pretend I am. I'm flat out telling you this is what I believe. And my belief is that people cannot control their feelings. Most people. All right. I don't like to use like everyone or you know what I mean most people cannot control their feelings all right not I didn't say ever I'm not going to blanket and say everyone can't I'm going to say most people can't control their feelings what people can control is their actions all right so if someone makes me really angry okay I can decide do I want to you know punch that person in the face assault them maybe they'll call the police and I'll land in jail um or do I want to go home and drink a bottle of vodka because it got me so damn angry? I can't, you know, or do I want to punch a pillow or, you know, or do I want to go to my therapist or my best friend and just like, you know, talk about, geez, you know, I'm really angry. You know, this idiot, whatever they did. Right. So we can't, con most people now, I don't want to say everyone because someone's going to come on here and say, that's not true. I can control my feelings. A lot of people think that they can control their feelings. A lot of people stuff, rip, push their feelings down. A lot of people will like binge eat, you know, and then there's a lot of eating disorders. There's a lot of disorders where people think they're controlling their feelings but they're not controlling their feelings they're repressing their feelings and they're taking that out in other forms that are destructful to them you know that are harmful to their mental health harmful to their physical health like binge eating and then purging over dr drinking over drinking um drug addictions um or sometimes they're just completely you know Press, suppress the feelings down so much that it leads to illness like ulcers, okay? So 
they think they got a grip on it. They got a, a hold of their feelings, but their feelings are taking over because it comes out in the form of ulcers. It comes out in the form of heart disease. It comes out in the form of cancers. So they're really not, you know, controlling their feelings. It, it looks like that on the outside, but their, their feelings are manifesting in other dangerous, dangerous ways. Feelings. Everyone has them. They're perfectly normal. Okay? Whatever your feelings are, even if you lust after whomever, I don't want to get into trouble. <laughs> People that you shouldn't. Okay? Let's just say, I got to be careful what I say because YouTube is cracking the whip. But let's say that you had sexual feelings with someone you should. Now I'll give an example of a psychologist. That's, in, you know, one that I'm, you know, been involved with, right? And it's pretty safe to say. What if you have feelings for a patient, you know? The more you try to repress those feelings, deny those feelings. I don't have that. Think that you can control those feelings, the more they will control you. Think about it. An ex scientific experiment says, if I tell you not to think of something, you're going to think about it much more because, you know, I'm bringing it I'm telling you, don't think of it. Don't think of it. So what's going to happen? You're going to think of it even more. So I think the more that you try to convince yourself not to have something, the more that you're going to have it. So it's better off to say, you know what? I have these feelings. I have sexual feelings for my patient. Or what um I have sexual feelings for like a father, my son's girlfriend. You know, you think like uh, you know, that's disgusting, that's horrid. I mean, it, it's against the law or you I can't have these feelings. Well, guess what? No matter how much you say that or try to convince yourself of that, it's not going to change the fact that you have the feelings, okay? It's not going to change that fact. As much as you, you know, you try to deny, to, look, at how many people love the Thornbirds? Oh, my God, Richard Chamberlain and Raquel Ward, is that her name? Oh, my God, Rachel Ward. The priest trying to suppress his feelings, you know, over and over and over and then, he just gives in to them. Because how longer can you push down your feelings? Eventually, something is going to happen. Now, feelings, you know, feelings aren't a bad thing. Some people think they're a bad thing. You know, I don't think they're, a, they're either a bad thing or a good thing. I don't think we should label, if I feel like this, is, if I feel happy, that's good. If I feel sad or angry, that's bad. You know, I don't think we should label it like that. That's horrible to stick these labels on. It's okay if you feel confident. It's, it's good if you feel happy. It's bad if you feel sad. It's bad if you are angry. You shouldn't be angry at your mother. That's bad. You shouldn't be, you know, infatuated with your... Um, I don't know, your daughter's boyfriend? That's horrible. You see what I'm trying to say here. Don't put labels on them. Feelings are feelings. They're neither good, they're, they're neither good nor bad. What is bad is when we inappropriately act on those feelings. Like if I'm lusting after, um, if I have a daughter, her boyfriend or a husband, let's let's say her husband, I can't act on that. That's my daughter's husband. I got to respect my daughter's marriage. Uh, you know, I might feel that way, but I can't act on it. If I act on the feelings, that's bad. Like, if I act on the anger and shoot someone because they piss me off, you know, that, then that's bad. But if I feel like shooting someone or, you know, punching their face because it really pissed me off, there's nothing wrong with that. You see what I'm saying? It's the actions, you know. It's the actions that are good or bad, you know. What you do with your feelings. This is it. It's what you do with your feelings. It's not having the feelings. 
so many times we feel guilty because we've been brought up to feel guilty, you know? I was brought up to feel guilty. You know, I had sexual feelings. Um, and my mother told me I was a dirty slut, blah, 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 blah. Uh, because I looked at, I don't know, I looked at Playgirl magazine. I bought a vibrator. Oh, am I supposed to say that? <laughs> when I was a teenager, nothing wrong with that. But she called me all these horrible names because I had those feelings. But what was I doing with those feelings? Buying a magazine, buying um, a battery operated toy. Well, who is that hurting? Think about it. What if I went out and I started having sex with older men and I contacted, you know, VD or AIDS? I was hurting myself then, right? Or if I had sex with a, ha with a married man with children, who was I hurting then? But if I have sexual feelings, remember feelings are neither good nor bad, and my actions are to buy a magazine with naked men, which I did, or buy a mechanical toy, which I did, and used it alone by myself, there's nothing wrong. Like, why call your daughter names, like whore and slut and like and all that? Why would you say that? What were wrong with this? Not, I'd already said there's nothing wrong with feelings, no matter what they are. We don't label them a good or bad. It's your actions. Now, what is wrong with those actions? There's nothing wrong with those actions. There's nothing wrong with looking at a magazine. There's nothing wrong with buying a battery operated toy or whatever. You, you know, there's, it's not hurting anyone. It's not. I'm not hurting myself and I'm not hurting anyone else by doing that. So why would a parent shame, shame their child because they are, act, they are acting on their feelings in a healthy, in a healthy way. Now, if I acted on my feelings in an unhealthy way, because I had sexual feelings. I was, whatever, 16 years old. I was a teenager. I didn't have any boyfriends. I was interested in men. You know, even if I was interested in women, it doesn't really matter. You know, I had sexual feelings. If I went out and I started picking men up at the bar, I'd be hurting myself, right? Because, you know, I don't know these men that could have disease. I could get pregnant and then I'm involved. Then... You see, I was acting responsibly with my sexual feelings, but I was still shamed and blamed for having them. So this is what I'm trying to get. To, this is the whole point of me doing this video on feelings is that if you're managing your feelings in a healthy way, there's nothing to be shamed. Or embarrassed about even if you were raised like that like I was I'm telling you that you are a fine person no matter what you feel even if you think it's inappropriate or whatnot as long as you act on those feelings in a healthy way like I gave you the example of when I was 16 and I became, you know, I had sexual feelings. And I'm telling you what I did about those sexual feelings at 16. Now, when I was married and had sexual feelings, I did not act in them in a healthy way. I had affairs, okay? That was not healthy. But my husband never shamed me, unlike my mother. I shouldn't have acted on those sexual feelings by cheating um, on my husband, by cheating on my husband with another married man who had a wife and children um, who were very hurt by our affair because the, the daughters let me know. Um, so that wasn't a healthy way. So I'm showing you that as long as you try to um, put your feelings in, um, in, in outlets that are healthy, you know, but a lot of people, because they've, they grew up like me, they grew up shamed and they grew up blamed 
but having think about it if you're a boy don't you cry you're a sissy boys don't cry so you're shamed into not showing your feelings you know then you wonder why these men are emotionally distanced hmm I like to talk to their mothers, okay? The ones that are emotionally... Because I never once said that to my son. I never once told him not to cry. I told him. Perfectly normal to cry, you know? I mean, and he cried plenty of times when he was younger. When he was older, he stopped. He didn't, you know... And it, what, I think because the outside world, peer, peer influences probably said, you know probably frowned on boys crying but he grew up that it was perfectly normal you know well my husband never cried either because he grew up in whatever environment that led him to be like that but I didn't raise my son like that I said it's perfectly normal to cry I didn't shame him for crying I didn't shame him for being sexual by himself I didn't shame him for anything all I would say was that's something we do in private when he's younger, you know. I wouldn't shame him for doing that. I would say, oh, we do that in private, you know. That's a private thing we do. But there was no shame behind it. Like, I was shamed. I was called names. I was degraded, you know. So, please, don't shame anyone into because... You grow up like that. It's just horrible. You know what I mean? And it manifests itself, like I said. People will um, try to repress things. You know, it's very hard if you feel something, you know, and you're trying to, re you're trying not to have those feelings because you feel shame because of your childhood and you try to repress them. They're going to come out in other ways, okay? They're going to come out. Um, like, for instance, me. I felt a lot of rage after what happened to my son and my psychologists that sexually abused me and my son who was severely beaten. And I try to suppress my rage because, you know, I felt I had so much rage in me that I could kill someone. Um, it's really deep, deep rage. And at that time, when I was going through all this stuff, um, I kept drinking heavy, heavy, heavier and heavier and heavier and heavier alcohol. Because think about it. If someone beat up, you know, uh, there was some story in the news a while ago about um, this guy killed his mother's child. I, I can't remember if it was a daughter or a son. And um, she, she, she went and she killed him. She killed him. And she was a hero in everyone's eyes. But, you know, what happens to her, you know? She ends up ends up in jail, you know? I mean, I don't blame her. If someone, if someone killed my child, I'd want to kill him. I'm not blaming her, okay? But I'm saying she's hurting herself because, you know, what is that going to do for her? You know, maybe it gives her some satisfaction. But I wouldn't be satisfied if I'm spending the rest of my, my time in jail, you know? So, but what I was doing wasn't good either. What am I doing? drink getting drunk every night on alcohol because I want to kill the the monster who gave my son a black eye and bruises all over him and then I don't want to go into it but I really wanted to kill I mean not no I didn't plan to do something like that I mean I had enough rage in me um and I try to suppress re you know suppress that rage with alcohol that's what I'm saying suppressing the feelings on um I couldn't talk about them with anyone because I had no friends and I didn't have any therapists because my therapist turned his back on me. So I had no one to really let it out and talk to with. So I just, for me to suppress them was to drink. Other people might got binge eat and then, or binge eat and blow it up to a balloon um, or whatever you do. You might sleep all day, you know. I'm just saying that Feelings you're going to have to deal with. I mean, and the first step is acknowledging that you have them and that you're okay. it's okay to have them. It's okay. It's what you do with them, all right? Try to have healthy, healthy outlets, okay? I gave you an example about when I was a teenager, how I did the magazine and the toy over going out 
and seeking strange men. See, that was a healthy way, even though my mother, you know, shamed me and belittled me and criticized me over it. It was a healthy outlet for those feelings versus other ways that I've, I could. All right. So remember, there's nothing wrong with you for whatever feelings you have. Just try to um, have healthy outlets for them, you know. Suppressing them isn't going to work. It didn't work for me. I turned into an alcoholic. It's, and I don't think it's going to work for you either in whatever way, it, in ulcers or, you know, in heart disease or, you know, you just can't keep bottling bottling everything in. Eventually, some, you know, it's just going to... And I don't want that to happen to you. So let's talk about our feelings. I think that's healthy. I think it's very healthy to talk about our feelings. You know, not be shamed, not be blamed, not feel insecure. Let's talk about them. And let's try to find healthier ways to deal with them. Instead of re suppressing and denying them.